you don't achieve worthwhile goals quickly or easily they take time they take struggle they take relentless pursuit day in and day out that's what it takes and that's why I say you've got to pay attention you have to watch you have to watch every single second because those seconds they turn into minutes and minutes turn into hours and hours turn into days and days turn into years and so that second that second that just went by that counted and so did that second and so did that one and in those precious seconds you were either building or you were decaying you were either gaining ground or you were losing ground in that second and in every second every second counts so make every second count you're still here and you get another chance this day to do better and be better another chance to become more of who you were created and what you were created to fulfill everyone in the world is capable of living outside the role or beyond the roles that they place themselves in no matter what it is you're not just a dad you're not just a banker you're not just a brother or a son or a convict it doesn't matter like everyone is bigger much bigger infinitely bigger than the roles they place themselves in and is capable of reaching potential greater than anything they could imagine you can live the life you desire it's right there in front of you but in order to achieve it you must first see it then believe it and then you must graciously ask and train your brain to help you execute your vision. So when you start to focus and you delete distraction from your life and you start to get seriously invested in doing one thing staggeringly well and you practice that one thing over and over a term to think about is mundanity. You do one simple, seemingly insignificant thing every day around your main skill, and it's very mundane, but small daily improvements over time lead to world-class results. Well, here's what happens in your brain. You start to isolate a single neuro circuit around that skill, and that starts to trigger a certain type of brain cell called an oligodendrocyte, which then releases myelin. Myelin is a fatty tissue that starts to wrap around that single neuro circuit related to that main skill you've been practicing and when myelin starts to wrap around the brain circuit what happens is you have accelerated learning times you can see more quickly heightened perception and you'll learn more quickly and that is really the quote-unquote secret of the great producers it's not a result of some natural gift but their daily practice their relentlessness and their grit their work ethic and their singular focus and sacrifice
care what you've been through, I don't care who you are, I don't care where you came from, I don't care what your past is like, I don't care what your stress is like, I don't care what stress you're under, I don't care what problems you have right now, I don't care what you don't have right now. All I care about is what your mindset is like in terms of today and your future. Are you going to make today count? Because that's all you can control. And that's all that matters. It doesn't matter where you start, guys. It doesn't matter what talents you're born with. It's about where you finish. And this race isn't over. It's not over. You could still come in first in the marathon. But you got to start today. You got to start now. You have everything you have. Everything you need is inside you. It doesn't matter what you don't have now because you can go get it. But it starts today. It starts with a commitment. It starts with a principle. It starts with a discipline. It starts with effort. It starts with energy. It starts with an idea that you're going to make today count. And a lot of people want to know what my routine is like. Well, it's predicated on that idea that I'm going to make today count. And that means that before everyone is up, I'm going to have entered a peak state already. I'm here to help you. But you have to help yourself. No one's going to do it for you in terms of the action. But you got to say something with me. I'm going to make this thing work. I'm going to live out my dreams. I'm going to live out my purpose. I'm going to be who I was destined to be. I'm going to fulfill all of the tasks necessary to live out that purpose, to become who I really want to be, not be who I am shackled by in the past, not live in a world of constraint. Most people in life, they die or they retire before they see all the huge results. Why is that? Because when they were in high school and in college, they pissed away all their time. They didn't build a great foundation. And so they never experience what's possible to experience in life. They never experience that high level of satisfaction, fulfillment, of being uh, on a sense of mission in life, of having life purpose, of living their passions, of having an incredible career. You have the potential to gain a lot. And you have the potential also to lose everything that you could gain. In the sense that you'll gain it if you put in the work right now to build your foundation. And you'll lose it if you slack off and you're lazy and you don't think about your future. Then you will not gain all this stuff. And in fact, your life will probably go downwards, not upwards, because you can experience negative growth in life. That's actually what happens with many people, is that not only are they stuck, but they get more miserable, more angry, more depressed, more of a victim as life goes on because they start to really see like, oh man, I wasted my youth and all the energy I had and all the free time I had. I wasted all of that on partying and drinking and other stupid things. I didn't invest it properly. And now I feel like a victim. And now I feel like I can't turn it around. This is a matter of life and death. I don't know who told y'all. I don't know who told y'all this was about math, this was about English, this was about science, right? And y'all thinking, why do I need math to blow up? Why do I need English to blow up? Look, this is not about, this is not about what you think it is. This is life and death. School is about setting a foundation. Are you hearing what I'm telling you? So I need you to try. I need you to try to read every single word. If you don't know it, write it down, look it up. I need you to try to do every single assignment. I need you to try to go to every single class. I just need you to try because I know something about you. I know something about you. I know when you put forth 120% effort, it ain't nothing you can't do. It ain't nothing you can't accomplish. I don't want you to live to die no more. I want you to die to live because I know if you try, I know if you put forth 120% effort, it ain't nothing you can't do. But live in a world of freedom. And that's yours to have. That's a choice that you can make. That's a decision that you can follow through on, that you can carry out. You gotta wanna make this thing work for you. You gotta make today count. What are you doing with your time? 
Are you wasting it? Are you going to make today count? Because it's precious. Or are you gonna let it just slip away? Let it fade? You need to be in a peak state at all times. That's gonna be predicated on your will, your intensity, your integrity, your character, your energy, your effort to get what you want out of this life. It's on you. This is iPhone 10. It is the biggest leap forward since the original iPhone. And we are calling it iPhone. Today, today Apple is going to reinvent the phone. When I was 17, I read a quote that went something like, if you live each day as if it was your last, someday you'll most certainly be right. It made an impression on me, and since then, for the past 33 years, I have looked in the mirror every morning and asked myself, if today were the last day of my life, would I want to do what I am about to do today? And whenever the answer has been no for too many days in a row, I know I need to change something. Remembering that I'll be dead soon is the most important tool I've ever encountered to help me make the big choices in life. Because almost everything, all external expectations, all pride, all fear of embarrassment or failure, these things just fall away in the face of death, leaving only what is truly important. Remembering that you are going to die is the best way I know to avoid the trap of thinking you have something to lose. There is no reason not to follow your heart. I'm convinced that the only thing that kept me going was that I loved what I did. You've got to find what you love. Your work is going to fill a large part of your life, and the only way to be truly satisfied is to do what you believe is great work. And the only way to do great work is to love what you do. If you haven't found it yet, keep looking and don't settle. As with all matters of the heart, you'll know when you find it. And like any great relationship, it just gets better and better as the years roll on. So keep looking, don't settle. Of course, it was impossible to connect the dots looking forward when I was in college, but it was very, very clear looking backwards 10 years later. Again, you can't connect the dots looking forward. You can only connect them looking backwards. So you have to trust that the dots will somehow connect in your future. You have to trust in something, your gut, destiny, life, karma, whatever, because believing that the dots will connect down the road will give you the confidence to follow your heart even when it leads you off the well-worn path. And that will make all the difference. I never really had a career plan. Um, we all have plans, we all make plans. It some, sometimes starts when you have to declare a major. And I, of course, was uh, at a college that didn't have the major that I would have declared, which was film and television. So I was an undeclared major. I, um, I majored in English because my father told me I needed a fallback career in case the movie directing thing didn't work out. And the thing I really want to emphasize is I didn't have a choice. I didn't have a choice. When you have a dream and the dream isn't something you dream and then it happens. The dream is something you never knew was going to come into your life. Dreams always come from behind you, not, not right between your eyes. It sneaks up on you. But when you have a dream, it doesn't often come at you screaming in your face, this is who you are, this is what you must be for the rest of your life. Sometimes a dream almost whispers. And I've always said to my kids, the hardest thing to listen to, your instincts, your human personal intuition always whispers it never shouts very hard to hear so you have to every day of your lives be ready to hear what whispers in your ear it very rarely shouts and if you can listen to the whisper and if it tickles your heart and it's something you think you want to do for the rest of your life then that is going to be what you do for the rest of your life and we will benefit from everything you do what's your art form 
You got to find what that is. People who find this when they're six years old or 10 years old, they have uh, an exponentially better advantage in life, competitive advantage, than those that find their life purpose only in their 30s or in their 40s. So find it as early as possible. Do whatever it takes. Go experiment with your passions. Right now you're young. You're not sure what your passions really are. You don't really understand yourself. So start doing the exploration process. If you have some nascent passions, you know, some passions that are still kind of like just starting to bud, go and um, nurture those and just see where they, they take you. If you're interested in art, go do some art. If you're interested in music, go play some music. If you're interested in um, uh, starting a business, go maybe try starting a business and just see where that takes you. You might discover like, oh, I really love this. Or no, you know, I thought I loved it, but I actually kind of hate it. And those are very valuable insights for you to have. But as you're exploring around, always keep your eye out for the choice. You got to make a choice. You got to make a commitment and a decision as to what your life is going to be about. What are you going to be mastering? Is it art? Is it music? Is it business? Is it human resources? Is it accounting? Is it math? Is it science? Is it history? What's it going to be for you? A lot of people think that wealth makes you great, but it's a lot of wealthy people who are not great people. On the other hand, poverty is equated to greatness in a lot of people that, that if they have nothing, they must be great. You're not greatness. Your greatness is not based upon your income. There are some people who are good at doing, but they're not good at being. Greatness will cost you something, not somebody else. It'll cost you something. It's going to cost you some time. It's going to cost you some energy. It's going to cost you some resources. It's going to cost you some hours of your life laying down, paying the price, going the extra mile, doing what other people are not willing to do. Greatness is not cheap. Greatness always costs more. That's why there's not many people who achieve greatness. They're not willing to pay the price. Greatness is not immediate. In other words, greatness takes time to develop. You can't just run in your room and come out great. Greatness is not immediate. You got to stay with it. You got to stay at it. You got to keep working on it. We give up too quickly. When you're alone with your thoughts, you get an idea of what your thoughts actually are. If you live your life just acting constantly on the momentum of other people's expectations, of you wanting to be liked by these other people, you can run into a trap and you, you, you set up a life that you didn't really want. You're, you're, you're trapped in this situation where you have a mortgage, you've got credit card bills, you've got student loans you have to pay, you have a bunch of going on that you have to continue to feed. And all that, and especially if you have a family and you have to feed them, oh my goodness. Then you're fully locked in, you can't take any chances whatsoever. And oftentimes people make the mistake of getting stuck. And it is just a tactical mistake, just like it would be a mistake if you got stuck on a video game. Just like it would be a mistake if you followed a map incorrectly and you got stuck in the woods. Your life is certainly some sort of a journey. It's certainly some sort of a journey. And we have to all be aware that when we're making journeys, we're not going to always make the right steps. And sometimes you have to back up and try again. And if you're in a position where you can't back up and try again, you've trapped yourself. And the system will set out honeypots for people to get trapped in. The system will set out the ideas of retirement, the ideas of the golden years, providing you benefits, providing you a healthy work environment. Why? Well, because they want people to work for them. They don't want people to realize their own dreams and escape. And those are well, fucking pain in the ass. So you got to hire more people and train them. And they want to set it up so that you stick around. You stick around in some sort of an unsatisfying world. It's up to you to see that video game problem. 
see that issue as it comes up on the map. No, no, I think this is a right turn. To see all the problems that could potentially lay in front of you and calculate your, your future. And then also look around at all the people that didn't do it and look at the misery that they're in and learn that you don't want to be like that. And then look at the people that are, have kind of taken chances and navigated their way. What did they do differently? What, what, what objectivity do they have that maybe you lack? What insight into their own mistakes are they willing to delve into that you're not, that you step back and go, you know, I just don't, I just don't want to look at myself that closely. But the person who's able to look at themselves the closest is going to get the more rational results. Learning is a lifelong thing. It doesn't end at Harvard Business School. It's your responsibility. I think if you're in any profession at all, you have to do it consistently all the time. Uh, I think I spend probably 50 or 60 percent of my time learning, reading, talking to people, traveling. Uh, it's the only way you can keep uh, on top of this global world of ours. And it's even tougher now because of the globality of the businesses you're all going to deal in. How reading is the most important one, but the second one, which is often forgotten, is talking to other people. You can learn more from speaking to people in 15 minutes than if you spent your life doing something. They can explain it to you, uh, and you can learn from watching people. You also are going to learn by, uh, uh, I'm going to call it imitation, but by watching other very good people and how they operate in difficult circumstances. I learned a lot of things what not to do and a lot of things what, what to do by watching uh, other people. The main thing I, I try and tell all my friends, family, kids is do your homework. Why do you want to compete with somebody on a level playing field and be exactly the same, have the same chances of winning as the next guy. Well, you already know you're at a disadvantage, so you need to change the odds. You need to tilt the odds in your favor, which means you need an advantage because otherwise the next guy is gonna beat you. You know how it is. If you didn't go what you've gone through, you wouldn't be who you are today. And I'm not belittling your pain, and don't worry, I've seen pain in my life, and I've seen not only in my life, but people's lives, and people say, well, at least I have no arms, no legs, and then what am I supposed to say? Well, at least I'm not an African orphan who's dying at four years old, and I met that person. What about the 10-year-old girl that was bought for 700 US dollars in Mumbai and kidnapped as a sex slave to have 350 clients before the age of 13, pregnant at 12, put the baby under the bed while she works on top, abandoned by her family. After she pays her debt of 700 US dollars after three years with her child, she leaves on the streets of Mumbai hoping for a new life. No family, no job, no food. Her baby needs food. She gets raped, beaten up on the street. She comes back to the only way that she knows how to make money. She goes back to the brothels. She gets pregnant at 15 the, the second time and then that child dies and then 20 years old, she comes up to me. Yes, I have met this woman. She comes up crying. She says, Nick, I just found out I've got HIV AIDS. And I got fired from being a prostitute. What do you say to that? You may have arms and legs, but unless you know three things, number one, who are you and what your value is? Number two, what is your purpose here in life? And number three, what is your destiny when you're done here? If you don't know the answers of any of those three questions, you're more disabled than I. The first thing I want you to take away from today is this. You will have good days and you'll have bad days, but you will always learn something more or something new and you will learn more overall on bad days than good days. You will learn more about yourself. You'll learn more about relationships. You'll learn about life and principles and it'll build your character. If you're a person who wants, let's say, improve on your character of patience, let's say. Don't complain when you're waiting in a line. You ain't going to grow in patience until you're put in a place to wait. It's like you go into a gym and you know, you're walking through the front doors and you know, you tell your wife or your husband, I'm going to the gym. You go into the gym and you come in three feet and you do a U-turn and you're right out, I went to the gym. 
Ain't going to do nothing. You got to go in there. What are you going to do? You got to pick up the weights and you exercise the muscles that you want to build. I stand before you without arms and legs, but a very strong man because of the bad days in my life. And then just work like hell. I mean, you just have to put in, you know, 80 hour, 80 to 100 hour weeks every week. And then a lot of work. That, that, that all those things improve the odds of success. Okay. Um, right. I mean, if, 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 if other people are putting in 40 hour work weeks and you're putting in 100 hour work weeks, then even if uh, you're doing the same thing, you know that in, in one year you will achieve what they achieve. You, you, you will achieve in four months what it takes them a year to achieve. I'd say the number one common thread of anybody that I work with is successful. Financial, athletes, people in politics, it's hunger. You know, you and I both know intelligence is a pretty damn valuable tool, but there are a lot of very smart people who can't fight their way out of a paper bag. And then when you find somebody who has that hunger, the hunger that doesn't go away, that hunger to be more, to do more, to give more, that hunger that never ends, um, you know, that's how you get these people that are the best in the world at whatever they do. And so if you can, I think everybody has that hunger, but for some people it's been asleep for a long time because they're afraid. They're afraid that I'm gonna get hungry, I'm gonna try, I'm gonna fail. And so it's human nature to protect yourself from the fear by just lowering your expectations. But one of the things I've learned is you get what you tolerate. You get what you tolerate in yourself, you get what you tolerate in your life, and sooner or later, we sometimes hit a point where we say, not another day, not another hour, this is done. I'm not walking this way, I'm not talking this way, I'm not living this way, I'm not gonna be in this relationship anymore, I'm gonna change it. And when people do that, that's the beginning of a breakthrough. Help to create a different vision for myself. Some of you are already doing it right now. I'm saying this is a time more than ever that you want to begin to inoculate yourself with positive words, coming to conventions, showing up on meetings, being on the calls to make yourself unstoppable, to get out of your mind the polluting negative thoughts that's causing most people to go through life being stuck because they're volunteer victims. Somebody said that many people die at age 25 and don't get buried until they're 65 because they got so much garbage in their minds. You are here because you've got a clear vision of what you want and where you're going. Give yourselves a round of applause. You were created to give life and make a difference with your gift somewhere. That's why you came to this place. You want to improve? You want to get better? You want to get on a workout program or a clean diet? You want to start a business? You want to write a book or make a movie or build a house or a computer or put together some mobile application? Where do you start? You start right here. And when do you start? You start right now. You initiate the action aggressively. You go.